Hey y'all, it's Dr. Lori. So today we are going to dive deep into the psych soch section of the MCAT exam. This can be one of the most underestimated yet critical sections of your MCAT exam. This section is really your golden opportunity to make sure that you score really high and dramatically boost your overall MCAT score. But many students either underestimate it or sometimes they just don't know exactly how to approach the section. So in this video, I am going to break down exactly what topics to prioritize and really give you a clear roadmap for how to study for your psych so section, it's kind of hard to say, efficiently and show you how to make sure that you can really master this section and boost your score. So let's dive in first. Why is the psych so section so important? Why does it matter so much? Well, psych psychology and sociology makes up a full quarter of your MCAT score. It is an entire section by itself. So unlike other topics and other sections, it tests more memorization, application, and critical reasoning, but it also is kind of the easiest section to quickly improve your score if you really study strategically. A lot of the students who score a little bit higher on this section understand memorization alone isn't quite enough. You also have to actively be able to apply the concept to new situations and interpret the research passages really effectively. So let's dive into the first high yield topic, and that is social and psychological theories. So first, you really want to understand some of the more foundational theories really clearly. They always, always, always show up on the MCAT exam. So the psychological theories that you really want to make sure that you are solid on. First, behaviorism with Skinner and Pavlov. You also want to make sure that you know psychoanalytic theory. Freud's theory. You want to make sure that you understand humanistic theory. Think Maslow and Rogers. And then you also want to understand these psychological theories. You need to know functionalism. Think Durkheim. You also need to know conflict theory. So Marx. You need to know symbolic interactionism. Mead and Goffman. And you need to know social constructionism. Make sure that you know the definitions the major theorists, the key terms, and especially know how to recognize the theories when they're applied to real world situations and actual passages. Okay, high yield topic number two, social behavior and interaction. Social behaviors are going to appear consistently on the exam. You need to dive into group dynamics and conformity. You want to understand concepts like groupthink, social loafing, conformity, obedience, so Ash and Milgram studies. You want to make sure that you understand socialization and social interaction. So think norms, roles, status, cultural influences. You need to understand social exchange theory, rational choice theory. You want to make sure that you practice questions frequently involving real life social scenarios and experimental setups. Practice applying these concepts regularly to make sure that you really can apply them as well. Three, high yield topic number three, cognition, memory, and learning. Memory and cognition topics are tested really frequently and pretty quick, clearly on the exam. You want to have types of memory, short-term, long-term, sensory, working memory. You also want to make sure that you understand encoding, storage, and retrieval processes. Make sure that you understand forgetting and interference. Make sure that you also are very clear on classical and operant conditioning. You also want to know your observational learning, so Bandura's social learning theory. Make sure that you really master these concepts by clearly differentiating between terms and knowing the really famous experiments that go along with them. High yield topic number four, psychological disorders and stress. The MCAT does regularly include questions on psychological disorders and on stress. You want to understand anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, and personality disorders. You also want to understand diagnostic criteria, symptoms, and treatments. You also need to know stress theories. 
think general adaptation syndrome and some coping strategies. Ensure that you can very quickly identify symptoms, you can recognize treatments, and you can understand how stress and disorders really influence behavior. All right, high yield topic number five, research design and statistical concepts. The MCAT loves research method questions. You need to understand experimental designs, variables, validity, and reliability. You need to understand common biases like confirmation bias and selection bias. You also need to understand ethical considerations. You need to know informed consent. You need to know confidentiality. You need to understand basic statistical interpretation. So mean, median, mode, and standard deviation. Make sure that you practice reading and interpreting MCAT style research passages so that you can really make sure that you have a, a mastery of these skills. Let's go over an effective study plan for approaching the psych so section. So in the first couple of weeks, you want to familiarize yourself thoroughly with the foundational theories and concepts that we just went over, that we just talked about. Make concise notes or make flashcards for memorization because there really is a lot to memorize uh, with this section. Think Anki, something like um, spatial recognition to help you get there. In weeks three and four, you wanna start intensive active recall practice. So again, Anki, flashcards, and start using your question banks. You want to regularly practice applying concepts in passage-based questions. As you move into weeks five and six, start doing timed practice sessions weekly, so that way you can really start to build your speed and start to build your accuracy as you're going through the passages. You wanna identify and reinforce your weaker areas with targeted review. And then moving into the final weeks up until test day, you wanna do weekly full length exams and then thoroughly review the results of your exam, your missed and correct questions both. Reinforce consistently missed or uncertain topics with additional active recall. If you are looking to quickly improve your psych social score, focus heavily on some of the high yield topics that I outlined earlier in the video. You want to actively use Anki decks or some type of flashcard daily to make sure that you really understand and know the topics. Consistently practice applying the concepts to new MCAT style passages that you have not done before. So. To recap, you want to prioritize the high yield theories, behavior, memory, disorders, and research methods. Make sure that you use active recall and consistent application practice. You also need regular timed practice and full length exams. You have the tools, you have the strategy, and you have the clear plan. Now it's just about executing consistently. That consistency part is key. Psychosoc really can become your MCAT strength and it gives you an opportunity to significantly boost your overall score. If you are looking for personalized guidance or additional support to be able to really maximize your MCAT prep, reach out to us. I put a link in the description. You can book a strategy session with us, with our team. And as always, subscribe for weekly MCAT tips, strategies, and support. We are here to make sure that you have help in succeeding on this exam. You've got this. Let's go.